Throughout the history of science, for every revolutionary breakthrough, there have been almost as many frauds, perpetrated by those seeking to profit from the world's thirst for knowledge and discovery. Some of these hoaxes are familiar, but there are lesser-known scams that have had an enormous impact on how we understand the world around us. America, 1812. In the city of Philadelphia, a revolutionary new technology was unveiled. Its inventor, Charles Red Heifer, claimed he had cracked science's greatest challenge. He had created the world's first genuine perpetual motion machine. Perpetual motion was not a new idea. Men had been attempting to achieve it for centuries. The basic principle describes a machine in which the output energy is fed straight back in, becoming the input. Such a machine could, it was thought, run under its own power forever. Some even felt such a machine could create more power than it required to keep itself running, hence allowing energy to be drawn from it. Such a machine could provide a limitless source of free energy to the factories that were already changing the very landscape of America, thus heralding a new era of unrestrained capitalism. It was within this revolutionary industrial climate that perpetual motion had become the holy grail of invention. Many thinkers of the day felt that perpetual motion ran contrary to the recently formulated laws of thermodynamics. But others felt its realization was merely a matter of skill and ingenuity. Red Heifer put his prototype on display and invited the great and good of Philadelphia to come and see his miraculous machine at the cost of one dollar a head. With an increased appetite for technology and invention in the wake of the famous world fairs, the public were more than happy to part with the equivalent of a day's wage to catch a glimpse of such a feat of engineering. Red Heifer explained that his invention, using only its own momentum and the power of gravity, not only powered itself, but also drove a second external machine. This machine, he claims, represented the factories that would run forever from an industrial-scale version of his perpetual motion machine. Indeed, Red Heifer had applied for state funding to make this larger-scale version a reality. Excited by the potential of his invention, the legislature of Philadelphia sent a representative to witness the phenomenon. When the inspector arrived, accompanied by his son, Red Heifer, increasingly protective of his invention, insisted they view the machine from behind a barred window. The boy was fascinated by all things mechanical. As he listened to Red Heifer's explanation, he noticed where on the cogs that connected the perpetual motion machine to the external device. What was odd was that this wear seemed to be on the wrong side, suggesting that it was the second device that was in fact driving Red Heifer's miraculous machine rather than the other way around. When the boy got home, he explained his misgivings to his father. It didn't take long for word to reach Red Heifer that he had been exposed, and by a child too. He wasted no time packing up his bags and left Philadelphia under the cover of darkness. In 1813, Red Heifer set up shop again in New York. He was confident that he could make a fresh start here. As before, he displayed the machine to the public. Soon the money was rolling in. One reluctant spectator was Robert Fulton. As an engineer, he was very dubious about claims that perpetual motion was even possible. His daughter was keen to see what everyone was talking about, and so he accompanied her to the demonstration. Not long after Fulton entered the building, he could hear something that made him more suspicious still. The irregular sound suggested to him that the machine was powered by a crank handle, and not a rotary motion, as Red Heifer claimed. Fulton challenged Red Heifer there and then, denouncing him as a fraud. 
Fulton declared to the gathered crowd that he would prove the machine was a fake. Red Heifer had little choice but to comply. It wouldn't take long for Fulton to discover the very simple explanation of the machine's perpetual motion running beneath the floorboards. Discovering Hank, the local drunk at the crank wheel, the other spectators realized they had been duped, and they raced back down the stairs to confront Red Heifer. With any weapons they could find, they destroyed his machine once and for all. Red Heifer was run out of town. Charles Red Heifer and his perpetual motion machine were never heard of again. That said, who knows what new persona the fraudster may have adopted to earn his next crooked buck. Jack Hawkins and John Gregson are some of the few to whom so much was owed. Angels 1-5, next. <laughs> 